So in this video lesson, we're going to uh, we want to find the change of coordinates matrix uh, from uh, from C to B. Okay, and um, once we have that, then it's relatively easy to go from to reverse that. Okay, because once we find the matrix, then we can just take the inverse to go from B to C. Okay, which is asked in part B. Okay, so we're given. Okay, so we're given the uh, we're given this. Uh, set of basis vectors b1 and b2 for b and we're given uh, c1 and c2 for c okay so so i'm going to show you the the long approach to this and then uh, and then i'm going to show you a, a a shortcut for doing these okay all right so the goal here is to find the matrix that converts a vector in c to a vector in b okay all right all right so we're going to let okay so we're going to let C, so we have, okay, so this vector C, remember that it's, so it's in terms of, right, it's going to be in terms of B, okay, and this is going to give us, let's say, X1 and X2, okay, and for the other vector in C, okay, so that's going to give us, we're going to call that y1 and y2. Okay, so we need to, we're going to use this to uh, con to construct the uh, change of coordinates matrix. Okay, so remember this notation here. Okay, okay, this means that C, right, so the vectors uh, C are in terms of B. So that means that we have, okay, from this general statement, we have that B1 and B2, okay, if we multiply those by X1 and X2, then we're going to get the vector C1, okay? All right, and that's because, again, we're, we're, we're saying that C is in terms of B, okay? And that was the whole underlining uh, that's actually illustrated in the previous example um, that, that I did earlier, okay? So... The next one, okay, we have, okay, same thing here. Okay, so these are going to be in terms of B1 and B2. So we have B1 and B2. Okay. And this is going to be, when we multiply this by Y1 and Y2, we're going to get C2. Okay. All right. Okay, so now, so from here, uh, we end up getting uh, two systems, okay, all right, there's two systems here, and then we can use, and then we can solve for, or we can use this to solve for our matrix, okay, so first one we have, okay, for B1, we have 1, negative 3, and then minus 2 and 4. So that's going to get multiplied by the vector x. Okay, and then c1, c1 is, so c1 is negative 7, 9. Okay, and over here, okay, we have, for b1, again, we have 1, negative 3, and negative 2, and 4. And that's going to get multiplied by this vector. And we want that to be equal to C2. So C2 is minus 5, 7. Okay. So now uh, we have, okay, we have two, two systems here. So what we're going to do is we can augment these systems, okay, and then do an REF, and that will give us our solution. Okay, so we're going to have... Okay, so we have 1, minus 2, negative 3, 4. Okay, so I'm going to take this one, augment with the other one. Okay, so this one and then this one. So 1, negative 2. No, uh, actually, sorry. So that's the one we have. Um, the other one is being, sorry. 
negative 7. Okay, it's negative 7, 9, and negative 5, 7. So this one, this piece, and this piece. Okay. All right. Okay, so we have everything. Now we're going to do an REF on this. Okay. So put this in reduce row echelon form. And this is this part is going to give us the identity matrix. And over here we're left with 5, 3, 6, and 4. Okay. So this that is the matrix that will take us from from C to B, okay. So that's in. A, so we use this notation, okay. Okay. So if you have a vector in C, you multiply it by this matrix, okay. It will give you the equivalent vector in terms of the basis vectors in B, okay. All right. So it's all right. Okay. So All right. So if you look at this, there's an easy way. Uh, there's an easy way to do this. Okay. Basically, what you do is, uh, what we can do is that we can augment. So if you go back here, okay. If you look at, let's see. If you look at this, if you take a close look at this. Basically, what this is saying, right? We can just take, okay, the vector. So if we're going from C to B. Then we take the basis vectors, okay? So we take the basis vectors here in C. So these are the basis vectors in C. Okay, so this is C1, C2. So let me write this way. So this was C1, okay? And this was vector C2, okay? And over here, okay, this was beta this was b2 sorry and b1 vector okay okay so that's b1 was minus 1 3 and b2 was negative 2 4 okay so we can just jump automatically we can just go directly to here set up the augmented system or the augmented matrix and then do the and then do a ref on that and that will automatically give us the change of coordinates matrix going from C to B, okay? So the process that we did, so the process I did before that just kind of breaks it down. So it's using some of the ideas presented in the, um, in the uh, material, okay, to, to come up with this, okay? So now second part B, we we'll want to find the change of coordinates matrix from B to C. Well, we have the matrix from C to B, so all we have to do is take the inverse, and we know that exists. Okay, because these are all based on the basis vectors. So this, okay, so that means the inverse must exist. Okay. All right. So for part B, let's see. So for part B, we're going to find the matrix going from B to C. Okay. And that is equal to we just take the just going to take the inverse of the coordinates matrix from B to C okay that's going to give us okay let's see so the inverse of this is going to be 1 over so we have 20 so, so the determinant, what over the determinant of this matrix here? Okay, looking at this one here. Okay, so that's going to give us, so we have 20 minus 18, so that's going to give us one half times. Okay, so we switch. So this will be 4 and 5. And then we take the negative of the off diagonals. Okay, and that's going to give us okay, 2, negative 3 halves, minus 3, and 5 halves. OK. 
Okay, so that is the matrix that will take a vector in in B, and can in the terms of the basis in B and convert it to a vector in terms of the C vector in terms of the, C, the basis in C. Okay. All right. So, so that is the uh, so that is the solution for part B. Okay.